live from Bahrain, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Summit Bahrain. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hello everyone, welcome back to live coverage here for theCUBE in Bahrain. We're in the Middle East, first time ever making the trip out here as part of our exclusive coverage of Amazon Web Services Public Sector Summit. For the first time, we are seeing a region being deployed here in the Middle East, in Bahrain and the surrounding friendly countries. This is a watershed moment for AWS as they put a region, they announced it and will be operational in early 2019 in record time, a lot of build up going on. And it's going to have a major impact for entrepreneurship, society and overall data. Data is the new oil, this is what's happening. This is theCUBE coverage, I'm John Furrier, your host. Our next guest is Mohamed Altura, who is the Chief Information Technology Sector and Communications Regulatory Authority of Kuwait. He's the CTO. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you for coming on, I really appreciate it. So tell us about the, the vision, because you guys have um, a 2035 vision around digital transformation. Um, in the United States, we always talk about data is the new oil. This is an oil-driven country that has created a lot of uh, value and also enable people through that resource. Now digital is the new resource with connected society. This is the digital transformation. What's your vision? Uh, well, thank you very much for hosting me uh, and uh, thank you for AWS for making this great summit, uh, really uh, helping people to uh, accomplish their vision and uh, develop economies as well. Well, for Kuwait, we are very much excited about putting the technology in the center of our economy. As you know, uh, now technology is being efficient everywhere. As individuals, we cannot live without smartphone. As corporation, we cannot live without a proper IT. And the same thing with the economy. You have to deploy IT in your economy, in, in healthcare, in education, e-commerce, public safety, government. So you make it dynamic and efficient and much as less cost to sustain and open a huge potential of growth using that. And of course in Kuwait, we are thinking of seriously every day to put the technology in the center of the economy and of also create entrepreneur segment to sustain this type of uh, economy as well. And uh, that growth will definitely help us not only in developing those sectors, but also the, the manpower of those sectors that's going to manage yep. uh, this so, growth. So you're the chief in Kuwait for the CITRA, which stands for the Communications and Information Technology Regulatory Authority. So essentially that's all the action, that's all the infrastructure, that's all the communications. This is the foundation for what the future society is going to be built on. Uh, basically for Citra, they are a regulator for telecom and IT, and our main bottom line is to deploy those two uh, technologies by regulations in our uh, country to get down to three things basically. To make people life easier, to develop and protect our economy, and to support innovation. And to do that, there are so many diversified initiatives that we have to take place, such as entrepreneur programs, such as healthcare everywhere, uh, making healthcare goes to people as well, such as education, generation change, uh, and also entrepreneur, uh, uh, the uh, entrepreneur segment growth, policies, they all come together and they create the three bottom lines that we're talking about, which is make people life easy, develop protect the economy, and support innovation. This is, the, this, is the, this is the reality now, it's not just aspirational, it's actually reality. Also, being from um, first time in the area for us and Cube, um, we observe on the ground here the ground truth, which is a vibrant, robust culture. And some people might not have that, so take a minute to explain the culture, because with digital, it's not a radical transformation, it's an extension of the culture. How would you describe what's going on in Kuwait culturally, and what are you enabling, and what's, what's the early signals of what is a thing to come? Uh, there, there is a very much focus on ICT in terms of a, a culture, because in our culture, worldwide, we have the highest number of uh, smartphone subscribers and LTE network subscribers, so we do have a digital society you know, by DNA right now. Uh, in the old days, we used to train people and yeah. make awareness. <laughs> now we don't have to do that. 
It's part of our DNA. You see small kids are playing around smartphones and doing so so many you know technological and uh, you know things that we never expected, uh, yeah. and that actually is extending also to the mid age and the senior people. We see that they wanted to make sure they bridge the gap between the young generation and the old generation. So definitely the culture is there, uh, the infrastructure is there. Our LTE networks today cover the entire geography of Kuwait, including the offshore islands. So no matter where you go to Kuwait, you'll find a high speed access of the internet. Now we started to do trials on 5G as well. We love trendy technologies. Our entrepreneur program is going to focus on trendy things, cloud computing, blockchain, artificial intelligence, uh, and internet of things. These are the main drivers for our economy versus traditional IT. Of course, we still have legacy in country, yeah. and we are looking of how we're going to transfer that to the trendy technology that's definitely yeah. going to be more efficient, more scalable, and much less cost and opening a trend of economic development in yeah. the country as well. This is a reality, and I think you, ma I, you made a point about the LTE and 5G, perfectly preparation. I also made a comment about you know, training people. I remember the days, like, here's a terminal, here's the manual, read the manual, learn some IT server. Mobile has changed all that, so that's the reality changing. The question is, what's next? As entrepreneurs start to have access, and citizens have mobile, you have to really start thinking strategically and tactically around how to provide value to citizens, people in your country, whether it's you know, just getting services and communicating to other citizens or with the, with, the, with the government, and then entrepreneurs who are creating and building things. Uh, you touched a very important point. Uh, technology is supposed to be, make life people easier because we have some government services that people have to go physically, uh, people or have to go online. Uh, they always have to, you know, follow up themselves. Now we want to make technology to make, yeah. to push things to people, to make it easier for them to interact with government, with healthcare, with commerce. That's very important to make a, a an easy environment for people to uh, to Im implement their vision and also make it easier for the foreign investments to yeah. come and work in Kuwait market as well. So definitely technology will play a huge role of making people include and engage with the government. Well, one of the sectors. exciting things from our, our world in the United States, I live in California, Silicon Valley, is you look at the globalization of entrepreneurship, check. The mobile penetration, check. And the innovation is not so much the technology anymore, it's business models, it's um, how money's being deployed and, and uh, used, cost of capital. So I got to ask you, because now software is eating the world, okay, and you have software money, and data is the new oil, data is money. This is a very interesting time. So if software is money, how do you view that? Because now that you have the infrastructure, cryptocurrency, blockchain, these are new opportunities to digitize your supply chain, create a new FinTech environment. What's your vision on this? Because this is happening really fast. This actually is very important to make your market efficient. And what I mean by that is that you can get things going much easier than the old ways. And uh, definitely we wanted to make sure that everybody is included. I mean, there is no, no one left behind. Awareness uh, definitely can be done e much easier than before. And in order to, for you to innovate, before you have to have a setup of labs, investment, now you just go to the cloud and find your innovative environment, whether you are healthcare, education, uh, biomed, you know, at all type of fields. Oil and gas is very important in Kuwait as it, as it is number one industry still, and it's all going to depend on definitely technology. Every sector is being disrupted. Yes. <laughs> okay, so talk about your relationship with AWS. Obviously you have, I think, some news you guys have had released with Amazon, a memorandum of understanding, or MOU as they call it. Describe the relationship with Amazon that you guys have. I know it's a very productive one. What is it all about? How do you see it unfolding? Uh, MOU uh, was signed on September, last September 4th uh, in Washington, D.C. between uh, Citra CEO and, <coughs> sorry, Teresa, 
the VP worldwide for uh, public sector in AWS, and is focusing on mainly three parts. Economic development, entrepreneur development in Kuwait so that we can develop the ICT economy, and of course, the protection of all this, which is the cyber security. Now, with this, these three main areas that we're working on, definitely healthcare education our priority, and creating the right policies as a regulator to make sure that we all gonna match the vision of 2035, uh, as well as the, uh, the uh, <coughs> sorry, the new trends of technology, which is IOT, which is the, uh, you know, the robotics, the artificial intelligence, all of these gonna really contribute great for the economy and the relationship between us and AWS. And we're very excited, actually, <laughs> to kick off this. We are now, since we just did it three weeks ago, we are developing an execution plan yeah. between us and AWS so that we can progress this MOU as quickly <laughs> as possible. And we have many yeah. stakeholders as well. So we already brought some stakeholders here as a kickoff yeah. uh, with healthcare education. And definitely on the coming days, we will engage yeah. more people from Kuwait. Uh, education, certainly great. Healthcare, you need that. Citizen interfacing with the government, all good. Obviously, Kuwait, oil and gas you mentioned, big, important. IOT and cybersecurity are now go hand in hand. Super important, this is very important. This is something that you guys see very big part of instrumenting a lot of the uh, pre-existing um, operations of the government and also the facilities. Th this is a, a part of your plan, IOT yep. and security. Talk about the role of cybersecurity in IOT because IOT is a surface area. You have to protect it. It's as, hard. As we already started the trial of 5G, of course 5G definitely give you advantage on speed, but 5G without IOT, I don't think it makes a huge difference. So, you know, imagine if you have your healthcare system built, built on IOT, so you can track the patients, track everybody, yeah. real time, anything goes wrong, you'll see all the components to come together to, to make, you know, the, the uh, the fix for the patient is much quicker than before. Uh, for example, if we talk about some processes in the government that takes some time, with blockchain technology and IoT, is definitely you're going to solidify the relationship between all parties and becomes real-time relationship. Yeah. And we're very excited because that would actually make, you know, the economy becomes more vibrant. Yeah. And when it becomes like this, then more money is going to be generated in the GDP. Wireless is critical for IOT, you're saying, especially 5G. Because now you've got a blanket of RF, radio, radio frequency, powering the devices. Great, love it. Question for you, role of data. Data is now the new way to interact. Because cloud makes data, you got analytics, you got people who are on mobile, they're moving around, healthcare is tapping in. Real-time information is super important. You got the 5G high-speed wireless overlay. How do you view the role of data? Uh, we're working with AWS on a policy called data classification uh, policy and uh, you know, uh, GDBR, which is uh, data general uh, regulatory pol polic uh, policy regulation. And that will help us actually to make sure the data, whatever class it is, it's in the right place. So, because in, you know, some people think that if you put your data in public cloud, then you have some issue with privacy, uh, which is not actually, because now you can classify, if you, if you have a public data, then you, know, you have a classification, it's everybody can access it. If you have a private data, the cloud can give you a secure place to store it and make sure nobody gets into anybody's privacy. Making it addressable is really important. Yes. And making it real time, low latency. Okay, final question for I really appreciate your time. I know you got a hard stop. Um, we're here with the chief of the CITRA in Kuwait. A super um, big time opportunity for you guys with digital and AWS. But I want you to share um, to the folks watching that were watching live and on demand, what, could, what should they know about what's going on in Kuwait the culture, the technology, the digital transformation that they might not know about. Share, share your, your perspective of what's happening in Kuwait. I would say, I mean, now the cloud uh, awareness is being uh, very much uh, obvious in, uh, among Kuwait people and 
You see a lot of cloud, ad cloud adoption is happening as we speak. I mean, our organization started about uh, four years ago and we adopted the cloud from day one. Uh, also, you think about the, uh, the things that, that we need to do more awareness in Kuwait, I think, is the IoT and AI, artificial intelligence, and blockchain. Because these are new trends and uh, people still, you know, not fully aware yeah. of what good things they can do to our economy. Mohamed Altura, thank you for spending the time on your very busy schedule here at this amazing event, Oversold, really crowded. We're looking forward to being in the region with theCUBE. We're looking forward to following up with you on the cool AI, blockchain, and IoT. We love that area, we love talking about it. Thanks for sharing your insights here. Thank you very much. Thank I'm you. John Furrier here with theCUBE. You can reach me on Twitter, at Furrier. Also online, I'm everywhere. Just search my name, and if you want to reach out, send me some messages, happy to talk about it. CUBE coverage here in Bahrain for theCUBE's new ground we're covering in the Middle East. All the innovations happening here, right around AWS's new region here in the Middle East. Stay with us after this short break.